I'm Sarah Fragani with you against 5 News. Now, one month after a high school student was found dead and naked, dumped in a ditch, still no word on who killed her. This weekend, her family is hosting a march in Caitlin Hernandez's honor. Initially, a person of interest was identified, but then investigators still have not named a suspect to this date, despite a Crime Stoppers reward for information that leads to an arrest. Now, Caitlin was found dead March 13th after leaving her house with a boy from the neighborhood. And when she did not return, her family called police and later discovered Caitlin strangled to death. The teen's aunt, Crystal Rodriguez, has taken to social media calling for justice. She believes someone in the neighborhood witnessed what happened to her niece. According to a flyer, the family is hosting a march this Sunday at 6 p.m. at the corner of Del Oak and Ashland, where Caitlin was found. If you know anything about her investigation, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP and your tip is anonymous. New video shows a driver circling an Alamo Ranch neighborhood before exposing himself to a little girl then returning the next day to the same area. Neighbors are hoping that this new video will lead to an arrest. It's very similar to the one the Bear County Sheriff's Office released earlier this week, and you can actually see in it the yellow car drive by in the same neighborhood where BCSO says the man exposed himself to a nine-year-old girl on Tuesday. This neighbor here told us the victim is her daughter's best friend. He asked her to come over, and he was... His pants were open. She uh, saw that. He said that um, he, he asked her to come into the car and sit on his lap. And uh, she ran away. She ran straight to my house. The neighbor told us the man drove off but reappeared the next day. The neighborhood happens to be near Northside ISD's Hoffman Elementary. So Northside ISD is responding by increasing patrols in the area along with the Bear County Sheriff's Office. If you recognize the car or the man, call police right away. An area criminologist is sounding the alarm about crimes involving dating apps, saying they're on the rise. Just this week, police arrested this man, Chong Yun Mounts. The 38-year-old is accused of pretending to be someone else and victimizing women in San Antonio and Selma. His victims could live as far away as Fredericksburg, where police there are also investigating. Ken Spies spoke with criminologist Colton Daniels. And where we're starting to see, you know, criminal and deviant behavior pick up is it's incredible. Anyone can create an account. Mounts, now in jail, is facing fraud charges and a sex assault charge. After a two month search, police have made an arrest in the shooting of a man on the city's southwest side. An arrest warrant shows Matthew Moran shot a man on February 5th at a house on West Jewel Avenue near Couples Road. Police say the victim told them Moran stole his phone while he was taking a nap, then shot at him several times before leaving the house. Moran is now charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Remembering a hero, that's what law enforcement and people from all over San Antonio gathered for during a special ceremony. Fallen San Antonio officer David Evans was honored Thursday night by the nonprofit Saving a Hero's Place. They unveiled an honor chair that will stay in the roll call room at the North Substation. Evans died in March 2022 from complications after being shot multiple times while on duty 19 years previously. You might remember the 2003 shooting at Denny's where four officers were ambushed. Family and friends were on hand last night to celebrate and remember Evans. The Justice Department is expanding background checks for anyone who buys firearms at gun shows or online, but Republicans are vowing to block the change. The new rule comes from the bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which Congress passed after the 2022 shooting at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. It requires more than 20,000 unlicensed gun sellers to now run background checks. Lead Republicans on the legislation say the new rules go too far. We were bipartisan. They're bipartisan hacks, and this it will be used as an example of why they don't trust an administration to do it in the future. It'll take 20 years to recover from this crap. Those rules go into effect in about a month. The Texas Education Agency, Agency is shedding more light on how artificial intelligence will be used to grade parts of the STAR test. The TEA said the STAR test was redesigned last year to have more open-ended questions reflecting how kids learn in the classroom. But because the high number of written responses, the agency says they need the help of AI to finish scoring in a timely manner. A HACI ISD coordinator says 75% of the written tests will be graded by AI. The other 25% will be graded by people. 
The TEA says AI will save 15 to 20 million dollars a year. A 17-year-old girl is showing off her impressive building skills, putting together this 27-foot gooseneck trailer all by hand. Emily Felty, who attends the Agriculture Science and Technology Academy, says this is part of her FFA project. It took her eight months and 468 hours. She's been competing in shows across Texas, placing in every one of them. Emily will be in the Panhandle in May and wants to help the area devastated by wildfire. So she's raised $5,200 and wants to continue the mission. You can help her too. That information is posted under Kens5.com under that story. And that is Kens5 News Now. I'm Sarah Fugan.